Guys, you've probably heard of the Ant-Man movie. Well, I'm here to talk to the real Ant-Man. Hey guys, it's Trace here for D News again. Thanks for watching. And I'm here with the real Ant-Man, Dr. Brian Fisher from the California Academy of Sciences. So why do they call you the Ant-Man? I'm the Ant-Man because all I do is ants. I research ants, I study ants, I teach ants, I eat ants. You eat them? Well, they're tasty, actually. You can get them in tacos. You can actually dig in the ground and pull out a honeypot ant. It's delicious. Wow. How many different species of ant are there? Well, we estimate there's about 30,000 species of ants. Wow. Now, in terms of numbers, that's not very many. Hmm. But what's interesting is you can't go outside and not meet an ant. Ants dominate forests. They dominate almost every continent. Why is it important to study ants? Like, what do we learn from studying ants? I think ants, if we can start seeing them, we actually change our perspective on life. You know, I say ants are invisible to most people. In fact, if you put all ants together in a big pile and on the other end of the scale put humans, they'd weigh about the same. And that means that ecosystems function thanks to the ants. They're the major soil makers. They turn over more soil than earthworms. If you took away all the ants from a forest, it would shut down. Therefore, we need those ants. Mm -hmm. To look at ants, you have to think of them as a super organism. For example, now if you're outside and you're an ant and you're out there foraging and you find this juicy little caterpillar, what would you do? Would you maybe eat half of it for yourself and take the rest back to your nest? Oh, I would hope that I would be a good ant and take it back for everybody. Well, that's a good ant because actually it's the only ant you can be because ants can't eat solid food. Oh. You have to take the food back to the stomach. The stomach of that super organism is in the nest. Hmm. It's the larva, it's the babies, that's the stomach. They feed the larva, and then the larva, like the caterpillar grub, that's the larva, it eats it and then regurgitates it. Remember that in an ant colony, you have all these workers, they're all sisters. A few of the sisters take on this job of transferring food. They go to the larva and they drink up this liquid. They can drink, but they can't eat. And they store the food in their social stomach. And then they go around offering up that liquid full of sugars and nutrients to the queen, to the other workers. And that's how they transfer food. Just like our society, we have to communicate and we have to move things around. And that's yeah. what they do. Wow. You described some of them like the Dracula ant, which is, sounds super cool. It drinks the blood of its own larva. So the Dracula ant doesn't have this fancy food transfer of a few workers going to the larva. This other group of ants have a very simpler system. They bring food to the larva, but then the larva doesn't can't regurgitate it, and they can't put it into a social stomach. So each ant has to visit the larva, scratch their babies until they bleed, and then drink their baby's blood. That sounds awful. I like what you said there where there's just ants on everything, because that reminded me of the movie Ant-Man, which we both saw this weekend. And it seemed like in that movie, whenever they needed ants, there were just ants there. Is that what it's like in real life? Are there really just like ants everywhere? There are, in fact, most people don't realize them until they're like carrying away their pizza on their kitchen counter. But they're actually there. They didn't all show up at once. There was actually an individual ant walking around your house looking for food, finding that pizza, and then going back and telling everybody else, hey, we got this great pizza, let's go. And off they go. And they're out there foraging, invisible in a sense, everywhere. Well, what did you think of the film, first of all, of Ant-Man? What did you oh, think? I actually loved it. Yeah. I loved it that they brought these wonderful creatures ants into the spotlight and people could see them yeah. doing wonderful things. Yeah. Now, was it all correctly wonderful? Yeah, well, it was just wonderful. Okay, w was the ants described at least well in the movie? As structurally, morphologically, you know, did it have a right head? And it was beautifully done. In fact, it was very accurate. They actually studied, I think, very carefully what ants were and they modeled about four different types of ants and they were all correctly modeled, I think. To me, the most important part of the the film was about size, like ants are small. In the movie, they really did a great job about scale, where the ants are small, in their small world, things are happening, punches are being thrown, and then they flash away to <laughs> our size, right. and nothing's happening except maybe a little toy falls over. Right. It did seem like they were all kind of working to a common purpose, and there were things like that in the movie where there were ants climbing on top of each other to get to a place or, you know, building stuff essentially with their own bodies. Does that, that happens in nature as well, not just in this movie? Ants are great problem solvers. Just as in the movie, they can actually work together to, to accomplish collectively what an individual ant couldn't do alone. What's amazing is there's no 
instructions. No, direction, you do this. They do this by these simple little networks. The closest model is maybe our brain mm -hmm. and how we hold memories and make decisions. And it's like that for ants too. Mm. And it's a great area of study, especially in light of our, the importance of artificial intelligence. Right. Trying to mimic and model how ants work and make decisions may help us create better robots maybe. So what is the strongest ant that you've ever come across? Some ants have big heads, which have lots of muscles in it for snapping their mandibles. In fact, we worked with a group of researchers at Berkeley to actually film it. We knew the mandibles snapped quickly, but we didn't know how quick, so we filmed it, and we actually discovered it was the fastest animal movement ever. They use their mandibles also to snap their mandibles and propel their bodies away. Oh, so cool. they, they could snap against a hard surface and then flip their bodies faster away than running away. Does that ant have a name? Is it like the mouth jumping ant or we something? We call it the trap jaw ant. The trap jaw ant, that's a way better name. We're limited in the fact that our muscles are on the outside of our body. Mm -hmm. So we can't take advantage as much as like these Newtonian forces of levers and, and uh, forces. So ants, it's the opposite. They have a skeleton and their muscles are in the inside and they can actually use these fulcrums and actually get a better lift for amount of weight and therefore they can carry other things. But other ants, can actually work together to carry something much greater than any single ant could carry. And that's actually complicated. Now, if we were to try to lift this sofa up and take it out the door, we'd be cussing and fighting oh, yeah. before you know it. <laughs> totally. But ants can run around and lift this thing up and manage all those lateral forces and off they go scurrying up a hill right. and into their nest. And the nests themselves are very complicated. I was talking with our intern, Tori, about how some of the ant colonies just are massively complex. Right, there are some colonies that are quite simple, maybe only 10 workers and a queen, but others have, you know, half a million workers in a nest. They're bigger than this studio. They're like elephants underground, like the leaf cutter ants. Ants invented farming about 60 million years ago, way before humans did. Ants have been doing this great thing. They've been growing fungus. They eat the fungus, they don't eat the leaves. They take the leaves back to the nest, feed the fungus, and eat the fungus. But this farming system requires an enormous amount of space and a huge society can live off of it. So they grow and grow and they can be bigger than this room underground so we don't really appreciate how wonderful they are. Yeah, well thank you so much for coming to talk to us. Well, I hope to come again, we can talk about ants. Oh my God, I love this, this is so great. So guys, what do you think about ants? Do you have a favorite ant? Let us know in the comments and make sure you keep coming back here every day for more D News.